31 days of unrest in the Rose City now, all to protest police brutality and systemic racism, and some nights have been quieter than others. Welcome to Coin 6 News at 11 o'clock. I'm Wayne Haverly. Now, we have followed daily changes in police tactics responding to these demonstrations, from blockades and verbal warnings to tear gas and flashbangs. Well, today, the American Civil Liberties Union of Oregon filed a lawsuit against the city of Portland and Portland police on behalf of legal observers and journalists. The ACLU says police attacked those groups during recent protests. Coin 6's Jennifer Dowling is live at the Justice Center with a look at what's happening there right now tonight and also how it ties in with the uh, lawsuit today. Jennifer? Good evening, Wayne. Yeah, there's a lot going on with that, and it has resulted uh, from people being at protests similar to the one we're following tonight. And just for an update on that, we're on the corner of Southwest Jefferson near City Hall, and uh, some people still remain here. It was very active about five minutes ago and much more active than what we saw at 10 o'clock on the CW. People were actually climbing on top of City Hall here and ripping down security cameras uh, and throwing them into the street, smashing them on the uh, cement or uh, sandstone. Um, on it, or not the awning, but the railing right there. They were, uh, you could see them just kind of uh, smashing them. And uh, there's a, a, still a group here. They were uh, chanting just a moment ago. There's still some people gathered by the doors, but they did rip down some security cameras uh, and move on. Also, there were some scary moments uh, over on Southwest Third when people first started marching towards Southwest Jefferson. Uh, we've got some video of that. A car pulled into the crowd. People started running everywhere. There were around 100 people marching. That car just came out of nowhere and surprised everyone. Our, we were surprised as well. Our crew, uh, we got some video of that, fortunately, because it happened so fast. And it was fortunate that we haven't seen any serious injuries with that. We heard that uh, one person may have hurt their foot, but we weren't able to talk to him. We talked to a couple who did uh, jump out of the way uh, just in the nick of time. And uh, we might have that interview for you uh, tomorrow morning on Coin 6 on the morning news there. Uh, as for that lawsuit, the people involved in it have been either covering or monitoring protests just like these downtown when they say they were targeted by police. Most nights I'm out there, it's really terrifying to be out there. Two ACLU legal observers and four journalists have filed a lawsuit after they say officers use things like tear gas, pepper spray, and rubber bullets against them during recent protests. But I would say in the three years that I've been a legal observer, this past month of June has been the most violent and the most outrageous that I've ever seen uh, the police handle situations. Kat is one of the ACLU legal observers. She says one of her most frightening moments involved getting gassed. Aside from the side effects that are normally listed with tear gas, I actually had cognitive issues. I had um, involuntary um, muscle spasms and twitching for about two and a half hours, two hours afterwards. I couldn't count. I couldn't count past six and I couldn't figure out how to open my front door. And that, and I had to stay awake on the phone with my, uh, with the head of the legal observer team, so that she could talk to me and figure out if she needed to come get me. Doug Brown, another ACLU legal observer, said he was traumatized after flashbang devices were launched towards him. The, the noise that came from those grenades that are that were fired directly at me, and just like seeing them come towards me was was one of the most frightening experiences of my life. Matt Borden is co-counsel with the ACLU. He says the lawsuit is intended to try to stop the police from attacking and assaulting legal observers and reporters in the future. The whole idea of the First Amendment is that it's a check against government power. Police in Portland are making a mockery of the First Amendment by targeting journalists using excessive force and by using indiscriminate crowd control weapons. Borden says they're asking for damages for those injured by the conduct. He says the suit was filed in the federal district court in Portland, and they're also planning to file for a temporary restraining order to prevent police from targeting reporters and observers down the road. And when you shut down the free press, um, that is when you're in, in, in danger of becoming one of these other countries in the world where they don't have these things. And that's one of the most important features of our constitutional government. And we reached out to city officials on that pending uh, litigation. They sent back a statement saying we don't comment on pending, pending litigation. Uh, so uh, we'll continue to follow that case as it moves through the court system. Meantime, a lot of the protesters out here have started moving 
that to the Justice Center uh, about a couple blocks away. So we're going to go and check in on them and continue to follow that. And we will have that live streamed at coin.com. Yeah, That's you in the studio.